Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman, and in a couple of days, you're going to get a message on your iPhone saying, hey, it's time to update. And typically those updates have been subtle. You know, they haven't really changed the look or feel of the phone. But uh, after you do your update this week, it is going to be significantly different. So let's take a look and see exactly what those differences are. So the first thing you're gonna notice when you uh, load the phone up is that you're gonna have this elegant uh, uh, fade up from, from nothing here. It's kind of a neat new feature. The slide to unlock now can be done anywhere on the phone. And when you do finally uh, unslide it to unlock the phone, you're going to get this uh, beautiful new screen. Well, I guess beauty's in the eye of the beholder, I suppose. But um, there's going to be some significant changes to the look of the phone. They've completely changed the way, way it looks, really. Look at it. It's uh, much, much different. Uh, you get this uh, nice frosted glass look now and you uh, look at your folders and um, things are a lot flatter. Um, they don't have a lot of uh, depth to the icons. So there's a lot of uh, artistic thought that went into uh, design thought that went into uh, these these new changes here. Uh, one of the things that I like really uh, right off the bat with the new update is that you now have this uh, little thing at the bottom here. Let me show you how this pulls up. Um, you just pull this up from the bottom and you now have access to most of the features that you want to get at very quickly, such as airplane mode when the flight attendant asks you to turn your phone off for the 12th time, that's the button you push. Um, you have your Wi-Fi and your Bluetooth uh, icons here so you can get at those very quickly now. Uh, you do not disturb your uh, orientation lock, so if you don't want the phone to uh, flip over when you turn it over, that you can do that there. Screen brightness, uh, music controls, this will control whatever the active app is that's playing music, so it could be the, I, the iTunes app or it could be anything else you're using. Uh, they have a new feature called AirDrop, which will allow you to uh, shoot pictures to other iOS devices that are nearby, and they have some neat settings here so that uh, you can lock it down so the only people that can do this for you are people that are in your contacts, which is kind of a neat feature. Um, you also have your AirPlay controls for tossing this to an Apple TV or to a computer like I do. Um, they put the flashlight on here now too, so you can lose all those apps that you had to turn the flashlight on. You can now just pull this menu up and turn the flashlight on, which is a, an innovation for, for definitely, without question. Uh, you have your alarm clock settings here, so you can pop open the clock, and uh, I use this as an alarm clock every day, so that's a pretty helpful thing. You have your calculator, and you'll notice again just how different everything looks. These uh, Every Apple app that's built into the phone is large largely changed and it works the same. It looks different, but works the same. And of course you have your camera and the camera is uh, very different in that it, it operates a lot differently than it did before. You have a couple of new modes. I don't have the 5S yet. I will be getting it, but um, I don't have some of the fancier photo modes that that new phone has, but um, you now have a square photo mode. So it's kind of like Instagram and uh, it really fires off these pictures, I think a lot faster. And actually the hardware probably isn't any faster, but the software doesn't do as much of the animations that you had before when the photo would drop into the bucket. Um, so it's really uh, in this rapid fire shooting mode, which um, has changed quite a bit. Um, at least from before, and the new, the new iPhone will have uh, even faster shooting capabilities. Uh, you can do the panoramic shots like you could before with uh, the, I, the iPhone 5, uh, and you can also go into video mode. They now also have these filters that are live in real time. So those filters you have on Instagram, you can now apply, uh, similar to Instagram, you can apply to your phone while you're taking the picture in real time, which is a cool little feature there. And they really changed the photo app pretty significantly. So let's, uh, let's take a look at that one now. Um, in photos now, you have your photos can be organized, or actually just by default, it organizes them by year, and then you can dig further into it. So for example, if I uh, look at 2012, um, it'll basically break down my photos by date and location. So um, I went to uh, Vermont for a little a couple of days. I was in Hawaii. That was a nice trip. Um, so you can see, you know, just uh, how much better the photo organization is because we're all just getting so many photos piled up on our phones that it's often hard to keep up with all of that. So um, that's a neat thing. The other thing they changed is the multitasking. So uh, the iPhone had limited multitasking. They're going to be adding uh, a little bit more to it. So now you can see I'm in this multitasking mode that I got to by double tapping. And iOS 7 applications can continue to run in the background. So as I scroll this off, you can see the camera is still shooting back data to the app. And if I wanted to close this camera app, I can just flick it off like this. And this is actually very similar to the Palm Pre and the HP touchpad, which had that you know, multitasking flip off kind of thing. So um, it is, uh, you know, they've borrowed um, from another company there. Uh, the App Store now will update automatically for you. So if you are doing your app updates, you now have the ability uh, to have it just do it in the background and it'll keep a log of what changed, which is nice. So you always see what apps changed. I actually recommend not doing that because 
uh, sometimes the apps will change and uh, you, you kind of want to know what happened, number one. Sometimes the apps get updated and they break the app in the process and then uh, you're kind of stuck. So I've seen it on a, more than a few occasions where they've said, don't update, even though it's, it's on your update screen, hold off until we release the new update to, for the update. And you get caught in this, uh, this endless loop. Um, so that's something to keep in mind. Um, the control center is still on the phone as it was before. So if you pull down from the top here, um, you have a, a day at a glance kind of thing, which is nice. It gives you the date, tells you whose birthday it is. It'll tell me uh, what the temperature uh, is right now and what the high was or it, what it will be if it's in the morning. And it tells me how busy my day tomorrow is going to be. Um, your all or all of the other things that would come in typically on notifications. You now, when they do come in, by the way, um, you can now flick the notification off, which is a neat way to, you know, because sometimes you have to wait for that notification to go away before you can tap the top of your screen. Now you can just flick it away um, and get right back to work on, on that. Um, there's also, and I don't have any missed uh, notifications at the moment, but there's also a missed function here so that if you had a notification go off that you didn't see, it'll actually alert you to that, which is kind of a nice, uh, nice little update there so you don't miss uh, one of those millions of notifications that come through on your phone. Um, another thing that's changed is the web browser, and uh, this is Safari, which is a uh, different icon, but it's still at least right where I left it before I upgraded. Um, and this is uh, a little multi-page view, so that tab view, you can see what web pages you have open, uh, and you can just uh, hit that and scroll through um, what's available. It also will tell you what's open on your other devices. So my MacBook has the Apple homepage loaded right now, uh, and my iPad has two pages open too, and I could click on those and have them open up on my phone. So if I left the house, I can just uh, run and get that. Um, there's a couple of features that have been carried over. So if you hit this little thing over here, it'll put it into uh, reader mode. Um, and as someone who d depends on internet advertising, I would suggest you don't do that because we need to earn a living too. Um, but it's there if you want to do that, get a little bit of better of a, uh, of, of, of a format for your, for your screen for sites that aren't already mobilized. Um, so that is uh, some of the changes there. Um, the iPad uh, version is a little bit different in that um, what will happen is the phone will try to, and this is a bad example because it's a mobile uh, site. Let me pull up uh, this, uh, this page here. Um, as you scroll down after the page loads here, um, as you scroll down, it will try to, it'll make the um, address area um, smaller and it takes away the buttons at the bottom. So as you go up to the top, those buttons will return, but it makes it smaller in the interim. So they try to, let me put, put it back on the screen so you can see it better. Um, so you watch the bottom, the bottom goes away, and the top. So it gives you more uh, real estate to uh, look at what you're looking at on the phone. So that is a neat feature. So I think that covers a bulk of the big changes. Um, you know, again, the apps have all been changed, so your calendar looks a lot different. Um, your um, uh, mail and, uh, you know, the voice memos now doesn't have that uh, microphone there anymore. My thing just crashed here, but uh, your voice memos doesn't have that 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 uh, pseudo realistic microphone. You've got a real uh, uh, different way to look at uh, your recording. And uh, Siri has changed as well. So if you, let me stop this real quick. Um, Siri has changed as well. So if we go back out here and hold down our button here and we I had to take a little jump cut because Siri was being a little shy, but I rebooted the phone. I have found the phone reboots a lot faster. And overall, I haven't had a lot of crashes yet either. So it was kind of surprising to have this happen when I was shooting this video. But uh, let's see if we can get Siri to say hello to us. There we go. Siri, what's the weather like tomorrow? Nice weather coming up tomorrow. Up to 64 degrees Fahrenheit and sunny. And the voice has changed a little bit also, so she doesn't have that same uh, robotic sound that she had. They've really improved the voice a little bit as well. So um, overall, it's pretty good. I mean, there's um, one last thing to look at. Uh, you know, the, the big changes to this are going to be when all the app uh, developers start to catch up with iOS 7 and all the new features that it offers. And a lot of those features aren't things that are user facing. They're things that developers can hook into. So all the 3D effects and uh, a lot of the changes that they've made to the overall look of the operating system that you see when it when you use it uh, can now be made available to developers so they can start integrating some of these 3D functions into their applications a lot a lot faster. And um, one of the apps that I use a lot is Tweetbot, which is a, um, a Twitter client. And you can see when I load it up, it, it comes back to uh, the way um, Twitter looked on um, uh, on your old iPhone. So uh, all the old applications are still very compatible. Um, they're going to look the same even though when you pop out of them, uh, you're going to go from you know, this, old, this old look uh, back to the new one. So that is the new iOS 7. It is coming out from Apple for free. If you have a eligible device uh, on September 18th, it'll be pushed down to you over the air. Once you upgrade, there is no turning back. So you can't 
uh, go back to the old version, it's going to be all in when it comes through. So I'd recommend making a backup, whether it's by iTunes or with the iCloud service, just in case something uh, goes awry when you do that. iPhone 4 and up are eligible, as are the iPad 2 and up. A lot of what you're seeing with these new screens um, is really dependent on the Retina display on there. So I think the iPhone, uh, the iPad 2 will look a little bit different. It'll still have all those effects, but you know if you look at, and it's maybe hard to see on here, but um, these really fine lines of these, uh, these, these numbers are hard to replicate on, on displays that are really not up to that high resolution. But um, it will work on the iPad mini and the iPad 2, which have the lower res displays um, as well. So that's it. It's going to be uh, quite a big change, and you have to decide if you're ready for it or not. It has been very stable, so I don't think there's going to be any issues there. Again, just make a backup, and I think uh, it will go well for you. If you have any questions, though, please ask, and I will try to answer them. Uh, but again, you can download this on September 18th right from your uh, control panel on your iOS device. This is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching.